Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, you've spoken a great deal about what you've characterized as kind of a crude form of nationalism, perhaps, on the rise. I'm wondering if you would advise some of those protesters at home to stop demonstrating against some of the charged rhetoric that has been used by Donald Trump. And I'm wondering as well if you've uh, advised your successor to be extra mindful of what you see as some very worrisome trends, particularly when it comes to making his own potentially powerful staff picks. Lastly, sir, um, in these final weeks of your presidency, do you believe you have any leverage to stop Bashar al-Assad and Vladimir Putin from continuing to bomb Aleppo? Chancellor Merkel, um, I'd like to ask you, uh, Bashar al-Assad has described Donald Trump as a natural ally. Your own foreign minister has described Donald Trump as a preacher of hate. I'm wondering, would you tell Americans that they now have a perception problem? One of the great things about our democracy is it expresses itself in all sorts of ways. Uh, and that includes people protesting. Uh, I've been s the subject of protests during the course of my eight years, and I suspect that there's not a president in our history that at some point hasn't been subject to uh, these protests. Uh, so uh, I would not advise people who feel strongly uh, or are concerned about uh, some of the issues that have been raised during the course of the campaign, I wouldn't advise them uh, to be silent. What I would advise, what I advised before the election and what I will continue to advise after the election, is that elections matter, voting matters, organizing matters, being informed on the issues matter. And uh, what I consistently say to young people I say it in the United States, but I'll say it here in Germany and across Europe. Do not take for granted our systems of government and our way of life. I think there is a tendency, because we have lived in an era that has been largely stable and peaceful, at least in advanced countries, where living standards have generally gone up, uh, there is a tendency, I think, to assume that that's always the case. And it's not. Democracy is hard work. In the United States, if 43 percent of eligible voters do not vote, then democracy is weakened. If we are not serious about facts and what's true and what's not. Uh, and particularly in an age of social media where so many people are getting uh, their information in sound bites and snippets off their phones. Uh, if we can't discriminate between serious arguments and propaganda, then we have problems. Uh, if people, whether they are conservative or liberal, left or right, are unwilling to compromise and engage in the democratic process and are taking absolutist views and demonizing opponents, then democracy will break down. And so I think my, my most important advice is to understand what are the foundations of a healthy democracy. Uh, and and how we have to engage in citizenship continuously, uh, not just when something upsets us, not just when uh, there's an election or when uh, an issue uh, pops up for a few weeks. Um, it's hard work. Uh, and, and the good news is I think there are a lot of young people, certainly, who were involved in my campaigns. and. I think continue to be involved in, in work, not just politically, but through nonprofits and uh, other organizations that uh, can carry this hard work of democracy.